If you were to instruct someone to do the worst possible things in the morning to set their day up for failure, what would they be? Uh, wake up and stay in bed. Uh, well, wait, there are good reasons to stay in bed in the morning. But once those are completed, then staying in bed is... Curtains drawn. Yeah, curtains drawn. Just using your... Passively scrolling on social media. Um, like there, are even, like, there are neurobiological data showing that when you are upright you actually are stimulating this area of the brain called locus ceruleus. Whereas when you recline, you actually are less alert. Literally, the position of your body dictates some of your levels of alertness. So That's you why you suggest uh, people to not sit like this uh, at their work desk, right? Yes, and if, you're look and if you're looking down while working, you're actually less alert than you could be if your eyes are averted slightly over and nasal Most people level, that are on their phone. Including me. And the postural stuff is really bad. So people are on their phone, they're in bed, they're, they're not getting enough light, or they just artificial light, or they're trying to get the sunlight through the window. Terrible. Um, they are then going and sitting and getting into like hip, you know, hip flexor contraction. Um, they're drinking coffee too early in the day. Uh, they aren't getting into any kind of movement. But it's mostly about the sort of randomization of activities, You're sort of making a cup of coffee while texting, um, not getting sunlight, you know, then they're scattering that in with like a little bit of work, but then something hits that's stressful and they're diverting their attention. They're sort of building in this eight attention deficit like disorder through mm, behavior. So they're doing, they're not single tasking, they're not monotasking and they're not being deliberate or intentional with the things that they're doing. They're just allowing the morning to kind of come and take them wherever the wind blows. That's right. And I have to say, even though I describe my routine accurate, my morning routine accurately, if I were to really optimize it, and I, I've done this from time to time, I would get up, I would hydrate, and I would immediately exercise. I would use that early, you know, peaking of the cortisol response that comes with waking to get the body into action, because that's going to generate its own dopamine and adrenaline response. Anytime I've worked out really early, like if I have a flight and then, you know, and then moved into the other components of my day, I find that I feel better all day long. I, I also will say if I work out really early, maybe between seven and 8 a.m., well, then my first meal might land at 9 a.m. Yeah. So, you, you know, you need to be flexible with some of these things. But the general principles uh, apply. I noticed that you haven't put cold exposure into your morning routine. I'm going to guess you must have a cold tub of some kind. Yeah, I have a cold tub and a sauna. I've been less good about that lately. The best time to do that for me is on my cardio days. I do it after the because run. Because you don't want to do it post-hypertrophy because you're going to blunt some of the responses that are actually you're trying to get by the the workout itself. That's okay. right. I wake up in the morning and I want to reach for my phone, but I know that even if I were to crank up the brightness on that phone screen, it's not bright enough to trigger that cortisol spike. And for me to be at my most alert and focused throughout the day and to optimize my sleep at night. So what I do is I get out of bed and I go outside. And if it's a bright, clear day, and the sun is low in the sky or the sun is, you know, starting to get overhead, what we call low solar angle, then I know I'm getting outside at the right time. On a day where there's cloud cover, so the sun is just peeking through the clouds or it's more dense cloud cover, you want to get about 10 minutes of sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day. And on days that are really densely overcast or maybe even a rainy, you're going to want to get as much as 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Another key thing is do not forget about, just don't try and get this sunlight exposure through a windshield of a car or a window, whether or not it's tinted or otherwise. It takes far too long. It's simply not going to trigger the relevant mechanisms. You would be standing there all day trying to get enough light into your eyes from the morning sunlight. And by then, the sun will have already moved from low solar angle to overhead. And it simply won't work for all sorts of mechanisms related to your circadian rhythm functions. So just don't try and do it through a windshield, sunglasses, or a window. It's just not going to work. Get outside. If the weather is really bad or for whatever reason, safety reasons, you cannot get outside, well, then I suppose try and get near a window. That would be the last, last resort. But you really want to get outside to get the sunlight exposure.